Kevin Frankie is showing his true colors as the public has now learned that he tried to charge his own daughter Sherry with burglary. This is truly just so insane and another really sad element to this whole situation and there is just so much to unpack about it. Last month, Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt were arrested and the public learned what was going on behind the walls of Jody's home and how her and Ruby were treating Ruby's children. People had been questioning Kevin Frankie, Ruby's husband, as he wasn't arrested. People have been wondering how much he knew about what was going on at Jody's home. Kevin has denied knowing the things that went on, but Kevin had been a major part of Jody and Ruby's connections advice group in the past, and we know from him and Ruby's videos, they were both extremely strict in their parenting and very public about it on their Eight Passengers YouTube channel. He did eventually step away from being featured on the connections page and being a part of their Moms of Truth Facebook page after a while, but people have have still been skeptical if he really is this loving father who wants his family back together under one roof, safe and sound like his lawyer has been telling the press. His lawyer had previously cleared up that Ruby and Kevin have been separated for a while now living apart, and he was unaware of how his children living with Ruby were, he had no contact with them. We've seen him and Sherry both showing up to court these last few weeks separately, and it didn't seem like the two of them were on good terms, which concerned people as Kevin is fighting to get custody of his children that were previously living with Ruby. People have noted that if Sherry is not on good terms with her dad, that's probably a sign and not a good one. Last year, Sherry opened up for the first time about not being in contact with her parents and said she did not support the extreme beliefs of connections. And it seems like her and Kevin have not repaired things since he seemingly lived away from Ruby. And now new information has come out that hasn't made him look too great and really shows exactly what kind of terms he's on with Sherry. This week, 2KUTV reported that Kevin wanted to file charges against Sherry for burglary, and when they said they weren't going to, he proceeded to threaten to sue the police. Like, what in the world? How this all happened was because newly obtained police reports claimed that after Ruby's arrest, some of her family members were able to get into her home after police served a warrant and broke down the front door of her home. The reason they did that was because they were searching for the two other children that were not at Jody's home, but still under Ruby's care at the time of their arrest. Now, following the police breaking down the front door of Ruby's home, Sherry had gone home to get clothes and personal items for her two sisters, who we've now also learned were in her custody after her mother's arrest. Prior to her own arrest, Ruby had been reported to have called a family friend to ask if she could watch the two children that she had under her care that were not at Jody's home. We're now learning that this family friend she called was someone named Pam Botcher, who is on the Connections business team, which is so concerning. Anyone that is connected to Connections is not someone that I want to be connected to. You just know that it's not good. We obviously know that Jody and Ruby are a part of connections. Jody lists herself as the founder on the website and Ruby is listed as part of the business team alongside this woman named Pam. Her description describes her as the president of Connections Foundation. I mean, just knowing that she's a part of Connections is enough to be concerned, honestly. And it's for sure why Ruby asked her to take her two kids because if she's a part of Connections, then she probably trusts her a whole ton. And Pam was on those retreats that Ruby and Jody would be promoting where they would have people pay money to go on a trip with them and learn more about what they were trying to preach, living in truth and all of that. And apparently Pam would teach courses at these retreats that they would do. And Pam is even featured in a video talking about how she got into connections and trying to hype it up. I love taking the parenting class. My daughter was going to take the class and ask me if I would take it with her. And I thought, well, I've, I'm pretty much done parenting. I, my kids are all raised and she really encouraged me to take it with her. And I am so grateful that I did because I learned the principles that she was going to be teaching in her home so I could reinforce them when I was around my grandchildren. And it's been really a great experience. Apparently the two girls that Pam did take in that day didn't even want to leave Pam's care because when Sherry was granted custody of them at the time, they said that they wanted to stay with Pam. According to 2KUTV, 
the two girls were informed by a DCFS worker that they were to stay with their oldest sister, Sherry, or be placed with a foster family, which her being a part of Connections and them having spent so much time probably with Ruby and Jody and hearing about Connections and living in truth and all of that nonsense, they probably painted Sherry as such a bad person to the rest of the family because she was no longer a part of living in truth and she did not support connections and so they probably thought that if they went to live with sherry something bad was going to happen to them because sherry was not living in truth it's just so sad to hear that they didn't want to go but since they were placed in sherry's care she was allowed to go into ruby's home to grab things for them once police had broken down that front door a dcfs caseworker was also at the home with sherry gathering items for the two younger children who were in the state's custody police assistance was also required requested by the caseworker for when they did this in fear that Kevin would be home possibly and might not have been cooperative with them trying to get things for the kids. And it's true that Kevin wasn't happy about this because when he had arrived to his home the following day, he reported a burglary and they had informed him that it wasn't a burglary. It was just them serving a warrant looking for the kids. Kevin also then wanted to file charges against Sherry, accusing her of stealing when she went into the house to get items for her siblings, but the police told him that there was no crime committed. According to 2KUTV, the police report read, I responded by phone to Kevin Frankie, who wanted to report a burglary at the home. Kevin said he knows the home had been burglarized due to the door being kicked in and damaged and electronics missing that contained his electronic journals. He believes his oldest daughter, Sherry, is responsible due to a statement she made in court that day. I explained to Kevin that the door was breached when SVPD served a warrant on the home earlier that week looking for juveniles. I also explained to him that we conducted a keep the peace call with Sherry at the home because she needed to retrieve essential items for her two siblings, the juveniles that were now in Sherry's custody. Kevin stated that Sherry is not allowed in the home and that he believes she entered unlawfully and he wants her charged with burglary. Kevin stated that he does not want any of the children mentioned in the home at this time. I again explained that they needed to get essential items of theirs that were in the home, which he did not seem to think was relevant. I explained to Kevin over the phone that due to the circumstances surrounding the incident, we would not be filing charges against Sherry and that it would be considered a civil issue due to her intent not being to deprive him of the items. Kevin was displeased with this answer and advised that we would be hearing from his attorney. This is a crazy thing for Kevin to assume that she stole these items the day before when his lawyer is out here claiming that Kevin has not stepped foot in that house in 13 months which is one of the reasons they couldn't charge Sherry for burglary because who knows when what could have been taken from that home in the last 13 months. Like who's to say that she got that the day before? And also like what was what was in the journal? Like what is he so upset that she mentioned in court to think that I need to go to the house right now for the first time in 13 months and find if this is in the home. And if not, I'm going to say that Sherry came and stole it because clearly he wanted it back bad enough to want to charge her with burglary like your own daughter he had no ground to stand on there and it's crazy he was so defensive talking about you'll be hearing from my attorney like what are you hiding what's on your journals 2kutv later went on to mention that the report mentions that sherry brought the items to the springville police department and they were given to kevin a short time later among the items were three tablets three cell phones, three cameras, GoPros, a stack of written journals, and three passports for Kevin, Ruby, and another one of their children. So he got his items back so he can stop being so dramatic about them being gone. But what his lawyer said about all of this is just so strange as there's literal records of him trying to accuse Sherry of burglary. 2KUTV wrote, Kester shared a statement with two news regarding these reports. Kester is Kevin's lawyer. Kevin didn't do either. He and Sherry are working together on bygones and resuming a loving and healthy father-daughter relationship. Kevin is still trying to understand and correct the upside down world that was dealt him. It's a lot to deal with 
all at once. Like, is he trying to say that police reports are wrong here because what? They just made this whole story up about him trying to accuse her of burglary. It's very clear that there is a lot that needs to happen before any kind of loving and healthy father-daughter relationship can be happening here with the way that he's not only been in the past, but reportedly right now as well. This whole thing is just crazy and every new piece of information that comes out just makes this whole thing sadder than it was before. But that is what has been going on. That has been what has come out this past week. It's truly just so, so insane and so sad to me. But if anything further happens, I will let you guys know. I love you guys so much and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye guys.